the regular meeting of the Minneapolis Zoning Board of Adjustment will now begin. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this live broadcast of our virtual meeting today, December 9th, 2021. This meeting includes the remote participation of members as authorized under Minnesota, Minnesota statute section 13D.021 due to the declared local health pandemic. For the record, my name is Matt Perry and I'm chair of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. I will now call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to call the roll so that we may verify the presence of quorum. Um, Board Member Frias is unable to join us this evening. Board Member Finlayson. Aye. Board Member Hutchins. Board Member Johannesson. Aye. Chair Perry. Here. Board Member Sandberg. Here. Vice Chair Softly. Aye. Chair Smikarova. Here. Board Member Wang. Here. Seven members present. Thank you. Let the record show that we do have quorum. And with that, we'll proceed to our agenda, a copy of which was posted for public access to the city's legislative information management system available at LIMS, L-I-M-S dot Minneapolis M-N dot gov. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, Ben Wilson. Second, Sandberg. It's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Board Member Finlayson. Aye. Board Member Hutchins. Board Member Johannesson. Aye. Perry. Aye. Board Member Sandberg. Aye. Vice Chair Softly. Aye. Board Member Smikarova. Aye. Board Member Wang. Aye. Seven yeas and zero nays. So that motion passes and the agenda is approved. I believe all of the board members have seen a copy of the Aye. Excuse me? Apologies, Chair Perry, that was just uh, feedback from people we recently admitted to the meeting. My apologies. Okay. I believe all the board members have seen a copy of the minutes from the November 18th, 2021 Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved, Ben Wilson. Second, Sandberg. It's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Board Member Finlayson. Aye. Board Member Hutchins. Aye. Board Member Johannesson. Aye. Chair Perry. Aye. Board Member Sandberg. Aye. Vice Chair Softly. Abstain. Board Member Smikarova. Aye. Board Member Wang. Abstain. So that's six yeas and two abstentions. And so that motion passes and the minutes from the Zoning Board of Adjustments November 18th, 2021 meeting are approved. Mr. Ellis, are there any petitions or communications? Chair Perry, uh, members of the board, there are no petitions or communications this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's review the agenda. I will read the agenda number and address of the project and state whether it's slated for consent, continuance, withdraw, return, or discussion. I will uh, describe what discussion items are. These are items which will be heard by the board and um, will take public testimony, deliberate on, and make a decision. After the public testimony has been heard from each particular discussion item, I will close the public hearing for the, that agenda item. 
Once I close the public hearing for an item, no additional public testimony will be taken, but staff may be asked to address board questions. After the public hearing for an item is closed, board members will then discuss and act on motions and the chair does not vote except in the case of a tie. So the recommended dispositions of the items before us today are agenda item number five, 2222 Grand Avenue South. Uh, this item is being recommended to be continued until the January 6, 2022 Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting, which is one cycle. And we can discuss this more when we review requested continuances. Agenda item number six is 5550 Clinton Avenue, and this is a discussion item. So let's move on to our continuance items. That item is number five, 2222 Grand Avenue South. Again, this is being recommended to be continued to our January 6, 2022 Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting. And I'd like staff to provide the background on the request for the continuance of this item. Good evening, Chair Perry, members of the board. Uh, this item is being requested for continuance by staff. Um, we received communication from several neighbors of 2222 Grand Avenue South uh, that the public hearing notification they received in the mail uh, was for another item on today's agenda, um, and they were not notified of the hearing for the subject property. Uh, this appears to be an error that was made during the printing and mailing process. Um, because we received that communication with insufficient time to re-notice for tonight's hearing, um, we are requesting this continuance to have the ability to resend the public hearing notifications to all of the neighbors uh, for that January 6th, 2022 Board of Adjustment hearing uh, to ensure compliance with state statute. Okay. Uh, does the board have any questions, uh, Ms. Roman, on why the continuance is being requested? And um, is there anybody in queue to speak for or against the item being continued? Ms. Blanford? Chair Perry, we had no registered speakers for this item. Okay, so let's move on. Um, is there a motion to continue the land use request for 2222 Grand Avenue South to our January 6, 2022 meeting? So moved, Ben Wilson. Second, Sandberg. It's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion before us? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Board member Finlayson. Aye. Board member Hutchins. Aye. Board Johannesson. Aye. Board member Sandberg. Aye. Vice Chair Softly. Aye. Board Member Smikarova. Aye. Board Member Wang. Aye. And yeas and zero nays. And that motion passes. So uh, the land use application for 2222 Grand Avenue South will be continued to January 6, 2022 Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting. Let's move on to our next agenda item. This is agenda item number six. It's 5550 Clinton Avenue and uh, Ms. Brandt, take it away. Good afternoon, Chair Perry, members of the board. Um, agenda item number six is a set of variance applications for 5550 Clinton Avenue. Uh, this is a middle of the block parcel between Diamond Lake and Interstate 35W. Um, the property is approximately uh, 11,600 square feet in area, um, largely rectangular with a slight irregularity in the shape of the front lot line, which uh, doesn't impact any of their requests. Um, there is a, um, what we would call a paper alley uh, behind the property, uh, which is an alley that exists, but isn't actually functional. Um, so the, the alley is approximately four parcels in length and doesn't connect um, to any other right of way. Um, so the, the subject property has a garage which is accessed um, from Clinton Avenue via a shared driveway with their neighbor. 
they are requesting two variances. The first is uh, to reduce the north interior side yard setback from seven feet to 3.1 feet and to increase the maximum allowed impervious surface coverage from 60% to 61.7%. Next slide, please. Um, so as a bit of a background on this project, um, this came out of a, a building permit application for a side rear addition to the existing house. Uh, the site plan that was submitted for that permit showed um, the addition at nine feet to the property line, which is in compliance with that seven foot minimum setback requirement. Um, however, during the construction, the applicant submitted a revision to that permit showing um, a new setback of six foot eight, not because that they had changed the design of the um, addition, but my understanding is that when they went to stake the um, property lines for the building inspector, um, when they remeasured, um, it came in at six foot eight. So they resubmitted uh, for um, new approval, at which point it was flagged that a variance would be necessary. Um, they did have the property surveyed as a standard requirement for a um, variance to a yard requirement. Um, and that survey came back showing 3.1 feet from the addition to the property line. So substantially less um, than what um, was shown on the initial site plan. Um, while staff was reviewing um, the yard variance application materials for completeness, um, we became aware that in addition to the, the setback um, issue, um, there was also um, some discrepancies with the, the site plan um, and a larger context um, that resulted in um, the impervious surface coverage at 61.7%. Um, and these discrepancies were um, a larger garage and driveway, as well as a pool and the associated pool decking, both of which were lawfully established by building permits pulled in 2003. Next slide, please. So this slide shows uh, at the top is the survey that they had prepared for this application. Um, and then the bottom is the initial uh, site plan that they had submitted for the building permit. So you can see um, where some of those um, discrepancies with related to the, the property line and the impervious surface coverage. Next slide, please. With regards to the required variance findings, staff finds that neither variance has met the first finding the requirement that there is a practical difficulty unique to the property, which was not created by the applicant and is not economic in nature. Um, there, there are no practical difficulties unique to this site related to the uh, request for the yard or impervious surface coverage variances. Um, the provision of inaccurate permitting materials, even if it's not intentional to deceive staff, um, is not does not constitute a practical difficulty um, as it is a condition which by its very nature is created by the applicant and is substantially economic in nature. Uh, most times. Next slide, please. Uh, with regards to the second finding, again, neither variance meets the spirit and intent of the ordinance or of the comprehensive plan. Um, expansion of a non-conforming wall is something that is allowed under certain circumstances. However, um, this project does not meet those circumstances. Um, so there's, a, there's an exemption built into the zoning code that allows a property which is less than the setback, but more than three feet to the property line to extend along that existing building plane, so long as that existing non-conforming plane is 60% or more of the length of the house. Um, in this case, the um, non-conforming plane that they're extending is 20.68%, uh, which is um, quite a bit short of that 60% threshold. Um, the intent of this is that houses which are substantially non-conforming um, are allowed a little bit of flexibility to expand. Um, it is not intended to allow houses to add uh, building bulk off of a small uh, non-conforming piece of massing like a, like a bay window. Uh, with regards to the impervious surface maximum, um, the intent of these 
is uh, to provide green space um, to mitigate urban heat island effects, uh, stormwater infiltration issues. Um, and again, there is an exemption built into the zoning code that this property does not um, qualify for, uh, which is that properties that don't have access to a public alley and are less than 6,000 square feet are allowed up to 65% uh, impervious coverage. However, um, given that this property is larger than 6,000 square feet, it does not um, qualify for that exemption. Um, so in order to, um, it does not meet the stated intent of the ordinance generally. Um, additionally, the property is in the Shoreland Overlay District. So um, these sorts of um, ecological concerns are of, of greater impact um, due to the you know, city's policies of you know, maintaining um, the health of our protected waters. Next slide, please. So both variances have met the third finding, um, which is that the proposals will not alter the essential character of the locality or um, reduce use and enjoyment of neighboring properties or be detrimental to health, safety, or welfare. Um, additionally, the property has met the requirement for the findings um, in the Shoreland Overlay District due to the, um, the grading of the site and the distance from the lake. Um, no erosion control measures beyond standard practices are necessary for a project of this nature. Um, the addition is not visible from the protected water and is not anticipated to generate any additional watercraft onto the lake. So given that uh, for both finding or for both variances findings one and two have not been met, the staff re recommends that the Board of Adjustment deny the requested variances. And I am available for questions. Thanks for that presentation, Ms. Brandt. Are there questions of staff? I'm not hearing or seeing any, so let's uh, move on. Um, let's open the public hearing and uh, we'll call people in order of their registration. Um, since it looks like the people who are in the queue for call-in are the applicant and their team, I do want to say that um, we have received your material and I would ask you to try and keep it to 10 to 15 minutes in length and to not repeat what the previous person said so that we can move things along. So the first person I see in queue is Christy Peterson. Yes, hi, this is Christy Peterson. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I'm recovering from a cold, so my voice is a little scratchy, um, but thank you for um, this opportunity and, and for hearing um, this information about our property and, and our project. Um, I did send in a, a brief PowerPoint. Um, if everyone could um, take a look at that, I can walk through that um, here quickly. Um, the first, the second slide um, past the cover page um, is just a picture of our family. So we're Christy and Jason Peterson, um, and we are requesting um, a variance to proceed with the addition at our house at 5550 Clinton Avenue, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, we purchased our home in 2013 after living nearby at uh, 52nd and Park Avenue for six years. At that time, um, our family of four had outgrown our one and a half story addition or uh, home and we desired to purchase a home with a bit more space for our family to grow. Um, we absolutely fell in love with an 1885 Victorian style home. Um, that's now our home. And so we've lived here for over eight years. Um, since then, our family has now grown to um, a total of seven. Um, you can see our five kids there in the picture. Our um, youngest was born in July of um, 2020. And also since the pandemic has started, um, both Jason and I have begun working from home. Um, we love and enjoy South Minneapolis and our community um, so much that we really wanted to stay. And so we pursued adding space to our home rather than exploring a move to the suburbs in order to accommodate our growing family and all the additional activities that were now taking place within our home, including work and, and schooling. Um, and after proceeding with building the structure, including the, the framing, the roof, the windows, the insulation, and the electrical work, we were shocked and frankly devastated to learn that we had built 
within the setback required um, by the city of Minneapolis, we can assure you that this was an honest mistake. Um, and we hope that by providing you with all the details surrounding our property and the support that we have from our neighbors, um, that we're able to obtain an approval for a variance. Um, if you look at the next slide, um, I'll, I'll go through this quickly as, as Alyssa already mentioned, but how we got here was um, this was a site plan um, that was in our possession from the previous um, owners of our home. Um, and again, um, was an honest mistake and, and didn't realize um, the inaccuracies that um, that it presented. So that's, that's how we got here. Um, the terms setback and, and variance are, are new to me. Um, they were not part of my vocabulary um, just a few months ago. Um, so I'm certainly learning um, as I go. And, and again, this was a very, very honest mistake and um, obviously one that, that I would undo um, if I could. Um, it's our understanding that these setbacks have changed over the years. Um, and until the last few years, it was six feet, um, but for our house, it then changed to seven feet due to the width of our lot. Um, I know the city recognizes that many of these older homes in Minneapolis are built within the required setback. Um, and as staff and Alyssa have noted, they include a clause that allows structures that are non-conforming to not seek a variance if the building while being expanded is at the same distance as the majority of the existing building. Um, if you look at the next slide, I'd just like to show you a little layout of the house. Um, so this is page four of the PowerPoint. The blue um, square in the bottom right hand corner is, is the proposed addition or the addition that's um, existing. And so if you look at the bottom of the page, um, you can see that the bottom line of the addition is, is no further um, than the furthest point of the house which as Alyssa mentioned is, is about 3.1 feet um, from the property line. Um, we understand that this, this point within the existing house that's the maximum width does only represent 21 or 22% or of the current total length of the house. And so therefore it does not um, comply with this part of the ordinance because um, it falls short of the majority. I think it's important to note that the staff included this in the report. Um, we also noted that the ordinance does show that the city has created a release valve for recognizing the impacts of applying current setback on homes that did not have those same setbacks um, when they were built. Um, and that the city has recognized that some additions and required setback are okay. Um, so again, our, our addition follows the 3.1 foot current setback of the existing building wall. Um, and we contend that this variance is keeping with the spirit intent of the ordinance and due to the design of the house and its location, that there are practical difficulties in complying with the ordinance. The other thing that I just want to point out um, on this page four and with the arrows in the addition, um, this addition was done, was done with the intent to um, add a multifunctional space um, to the back of the house. As you can see at the current rear of the house on the right hand side of the drawing, um, the kitchen and den are very narrow and there is um, a very narrow walkway to get um, back there, which creates quite a bottleneck um, within the house. Um, and we spend about 90% of our time in, in about 10% of our house, um, I always note. And so the addition allowed um, for an Eden kitchen, a study and work area um, to help me get out of my office for the work, or out of my bedroom for the work day um, and an office space, um, as well as opening up that den um, and the kitchen um, for the modern family and, and everything that goes into raising five kids these days. Um, Moving on, um, we fully understand that and respect that the city establishes these yard setbacks for several reasons, but, but core to this is to minimize the impact um, from one property to the next and, and to respect the privacy um, of our neighbors. And that is super important to us. Um, I'm now gonna move on to page five um, of the PowerPoint sent over. So our neighbors to the north, um, Mike and Jen, um, the people most impacted by this addition have been a part of this process from the very beginning, even before we ever certainly envisioned um, having to, to ask for a variance. Um, we made sure that they knew about the project um, and were in full support um, of everything that we were looking to do. Um, they have submitted a, a, level, a letter of support for the project, knowing that we are now um, being asked to apply for this variance. Um, and I have included that um, on page six of the PowerPoint. Um, or excuse me, um, page seven. Um, but looking at page five, 
Um, the addition is not visible from the house, looking straight on, as, as Alyssa mentioned as well, and that's um, represented in the, in the upper right-hand photo. Um, and then in, in the bottom left-hand photo, just showing that the addition, um, while you can see it when looking at an angle, is no wider um, than, the, than the maximum width um, of the original house. Um, if you look at slide six, um, I want to share a little bit um, about the practical difficulty of, of adding on to um, a, a house as unique um, and special in my mind as this one is. Um, but in the in the upper right hand corner, um, you can see a picture of the house um, from the south side. And so the red circle just shows the other side of the house um, and the practical difficulty associated with adding space to this other side of the house is that there is um, an air conditioner. There is also um, a parking pad um, and there's also the garbage receptacles along with um, a shared driveway with, with our neighbors on the other side. And so um, that whole page, page six of the PowerPoint just shows various views um, depicting how that would be um, impractical to add on to um, that side of the house. Um, the next slide, slide seven, um, then talks a little bit more about our neighbors. And so, um, and like I mentioned in the upper right hand corner, just a letter of support um, from Jen and Mike dated back um, in October, um, signed after the existing structure was built. Um, and, and once we had the understanding that, that we would be um, coming forward and, and asking for um, the variance. Um, the, as we mentioned, the, the addition does not extend any further than the furthest point of the existing house. Um, additionally, prior to the addition, as you can see on page seven um, in the furthest left photograph, um, the arrow is pointing to the sliding glass doors. And so the, the existing sliding glass doors um, opened to a terrace. Um, and I, I realize this photo was taken after it was demolished, um, but it was basically um, a terrace or a patio and there we had our grill um, and a small seating area along with stairs down. And so there's quite a bit of activity in that space, which as you can see is immediately adjacent to, to Mike and Jen's property. And so a lot of activity and, and traffic coming out those patio doors. Um, if you look at the picture with the addition, the picture in the middle of the page um, and the new sliding glass doors, the traffic would now come out the back. Um, and so from a privacy standpoint, um, there's much less traffic, crowds, commotion um, on the part of the house that's, that's very near to where Mike and Jen have their own patio. So while there are windows um, out that northern side of the addition, the traffic um, coming out the back side we feel gives them um, much more privacy, which was very important to them and also very important to us. And, Again, um, just want to recognize their letter of support um, for for this addition as, as they've been taken along um, every step of the way in this project. Um, in addition to the setback, um, we'd also learned uh, about the, the other variants requested, as Alyssa mentioned, were approximately 1% over the required 60% um, lot coverage or, or impervious um, coverage, another word that was not part of my vocabulary um, just a couple of months ago. Um, we are seeking variance approval for this regulation as well, um, but I will note we are very willing to invest in alternative solutions, um, such as reducing the size of the south parking pad by approximately 200 square feet, um, installing a rain garden to capture stormwater, replacing the front sidewalk leading up to the house, um, Again, I, I work at Target, my husband's a salesman. We are by no means experts in, in this space, but we are more than willing to um, work um, to come up with, cre with creative solutions um, to ensure that, that we're um, obtaining, you know, and, and then sticking with the, the intent of, of this regulation if, if unable to get a variance. Um, so in closing, it's, it's our intent to continue raising our, our now large family um, in South Minneapolis, in this home, in this community, that are so near and dear to our hearts. We have a school and a church um, in the community um, and, and are very involved in those, um, super involved in, in the neighborhood and, and certainly want to keep the aesthetic and, and the intent um, of everything intact. Um, when we bought this house, we were fascinated to learn from the previous owner. Um, he was a self-proclaimed history enthusiast. He even has um, photos of the home from sometime in the early 1900s that he passed on to us. 
he shared with us that it was originally a lake home um, for people who lived in and worked in downtown Minneapolis. And on the weekends, they would ride their horses, horses south um, to their second home. Um, fast forward 136 years um, from the time the home was built. We're now looking to update the home for our modern family um, with both of us working from home, um, five kids conducting their studies and their activities from home. Um, and we're all learning to deal with the quarantines that have um, become a part of our, our new normal life in this post pandemic era. Um, our intent is to accomplish these goals um, while respecting and, and honoring our neighbors' rights to privacy and our mutual interest, like I said, in, this, in maintaining the aesthetic appeal um, of the home in, in this um, beloved Minneapolis neighborhood. Um, we fully understand that our misguided plans have unintentionally violated the city's requirements and we're asking for your willingness to work with us in approving our request. Thanks for your... Yep, thanks for your testimony. Um, are there any questions of Ms. Peterson? I'm not seeing any. So let's move on to, um, actually I do have a question um, before we go on to other speakers. Um, and it looks like someone else is too. Um, Let's say you had the right uh, survey from the start um, that showed that you were going to be uh, putting your project into the required side yard setback and you would be over compliance and in impervious service. What would you have done? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it, to be honest, we, we wouldn't have added on to the house at all. Um, if I go back to slide four, um, as, as showing the traffic pattern, a, a key component of this project was um, the the traffic flow that goes from what's called the living room on this site plan and into the existing addition and, and having that um, other entryway into the back part of the house. Um, I mentioned the bottleneck that goes to the back of the house um, where we spend 90% of our time and 10% of the house. Um, it was very important to have that. Um, and if we had to have four less feet um, on the addition, we wouldn't be able to have that um, that walkway through from the living room, and so we wouldn't have solved um, the bottleneck and, and traffic flow issue. Um, additionally, um, we wouldn't have been able to have the, the sliding glass doors um, off the back, and um, which was also key to us when we thought about having um, visibility to our backyard and our pool um, and making sure that we're properly supervising um, the activities um, that go on um, in the backyard. So those are all key components and, and key tenants of, of the design that um, we put a lot of thought into. Um, and so again, the, the addition wouldn't have made sense um, for us and, and the needs of our family without the four additional feet. So you would have looked for other options and other housing? Yes. I see. Okay, thanks for answering my question. Mr. Johannesson uh, has a question. Yes, thanks Chair Perry and thanks for your presentation. Uh, was the work completed by a contractor that you hired or was it completed by yourselves? No, it was completed by Higgins Construction. All right, very good, thank you very much. Are there any other questions of Ms. Peterson? Mr. Hutchins. Thanks, Chair Perry, and thanks to the applicant too. Question for you, it looks like the survey that you had worked off of shows an 11 foot from, 11 foot uh, setback from your, say the front of your home to the right, if you're standing on Clinton Avenue. Am I correct in looking at that? Yes. So if I look at the front view of your photos of your home, it looks like your fence is about Oh, three, four feet off of the corner of that house. Um, which photo are you looking at? I'm looking at the staff's proposal. It's a photo of the front of your house, and then it's standing in the street from Clinton Avenue, looking at the side where you're looking essentially down your property line. Yeah, I think the confusing part is that. Um, we were always told, and again, this is, you know, 
probably something in hindsight we should have validated, but our neighbors had looked into putting a new fence in and they had told us that the fence wasn't actually on the property line, um, that, that the fence was, uh, that our property line was actually on their side of the fence. Um, and they had actually asked us if we wanted to move the fence so that we were taking advantage of our entire yard, which we declined and said there was no need. We didn't have a use for that space. Um, but then when the actual survey came back, we found that, that that they had been misinformed as well. Okay, that's why I was just wondering why the fence would be so far into your property if that was the assumed property line or not. Yeah, and we this was a conversation we had a couple years back. Like I said, when um, they were looking into scoping into getting a, a new fence and we were kind of coordinating on that. And so um, didn't have anything to do with this addition, but that was where we had gotten that um, notion that, oh, we do have an additional couple feet because that was what we had heard from them and obviously didn't validate our sources. All right, well, thanks for that information. Great. Appreciate it. They were surprised to hear um, what the survey came back with as well. Thank you. Are there any board other board members who have questions or comments? Um, let's move on to the next speaker then, Mr. Peterson, Jason Peterson. Uh, yeah, hi, this is this is Jason. I'm I'm here next to Christy. I just put in my name just to be sure that, that we were heard. Um, I, I really don't have anything to add with this at, at this time. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And lastly, on our queue is Mr. Mike Higgins. Mr. Higgins, if you press star six, you can unmute your phone and um, you don't need to repeat anything that's been said already, but if you have other stuff that you'd like to add, please do so. Um, yep, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, uh, thanks for taking the time. Um, Thanks for you guys' service to the community. I appreciate that. Um, I am the contractor on the job. And I just want to start with an apology for misinformation that I was presented with that I had no, no way to move or try to build an, an addition um, within a setback. My approach was not to um, get a job and then build it and then ask for an apology instead of getting permission on the front side. That was not my intent. Um, it, I, uh, it's stressing me out, really, as a contractor. It's not where I want to put the Petersons family into this position. So I'm sorry for my lack of uh, due diligence on my end to make sure it was all figured out before starting the process. Um, and as far as the impervious surface, I never thought we'd be even close to that. Uh, number and so I didn't look further into all of the structure, the pool, or the decking around that. Um, and then, I, yeah, it's already been stated, but we'll do what we need to if you pass the one bearings to make sure that the impervious is taken care of. Um, I think the only other things I thought about would added would had any value on this would be the probably lack of parking, the practical difficulty of parking as well. In the Minneapolis streets can be difficult. And with the new ordinance in multi-unit housing, if more um, parking is taken from the Petersons yard to park on the street, it will cause congestion for the neighborhood. I think that's a consideration that will probably come up in the future. Um, and with the uh, with the neighbor's house being further off of the property line, um, the this the di the distance between the two properties will still be seven seven feet per property, fourteen feet. They'll still be fourteen feet apart, so it'll still be or look or appear as if their both houses are seven feet apart. So I think that's worth that's noteworthy to add to that. And uh, that's that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Higgins. Um, I don't think there's anyone else in the queue. And so with that, I will close the public hearing. 
and um, ask for for comment or question. Mr. Johannesson, you have a question. Yes, I do. Um, thanks for your presentation, Mr. Higgins, and your discussion. Um, is this the first addition in the city of Minneapolis you've done? Um, no, I've done a couple in Minneapolis. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. I did one in North Minneapolis that I can remember off the top of my head. Um, yeah, not a lot. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. Okay. As I said, the public hearing is closed, so let's move on. Uh, board comment or um, questions to staff, if you have any. Mr. Sandberg, you have a question of staff. Yeah, thank you, Chair Perry. Um, with this situation, I'm having trouble uh, finding any argument against staff's findings. I'm wondering if there are any other remedies to this situation that might include replatting the lot with their neighbors to acquire some of the property that would uh, allow the um, allow this addition to exist without violating the zoning ordinances. Thank you, can Chair you, Perry, board member Sandberg. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, can you address that, Ms. Brandt? Oh, yes. Um, so the property is already over the maximum size for a parcel of land, um, approximately Three, two and a half, three years ago, the city council enacted a maximum lot size to kind of parallel the minimum size for a lot. Um, and this property is already over that maximum lot size. So um, buying four feet of land from the neighbor and moving that property line is, is not something that would be feasible to have approved. Okay, thank you for that answer. Any other questions of staff or comments or um, a motion? I too, uh, sorry, this is a comment. I too am finding it hard to um, move from staff binding. Um, it sounds it sounds unfortunate that it, it occurred after um, after the error was discovered, but I can't think of a practical difficulty or um, another finding for number two. I look forward to hearing board member comment. Thank you, Ms. Smekarova. Uh, Mr. Southley. Thank you, Chair Perry, and thanks to everyone for the presentations. Um, I really appreciate Mr. Sandberg's out of the box thinking with the minor subdivision idea. Um, it is unfortunate that that sounds like it couldn't work, but maybe the applicant can can pursue that avenue anyway, or at least explore it more deeply with staff. Um, but I uh, agree with everyone else so far, as unfortunate as this is, as idiosyncratic and beautiful as this neighborhood is with, with large houses um, of various types and shapes. Uh, I, I agree with staff finding, and I can't find any reason to deviate from that. Okay, does anybody else have a comment or a question or a motion? Uh, I make a motion to adopt staff findings, Johannesson. Okay, there, it, and it's been seconded by Mr. Softley, I believe. And so we have a motion and a second before us. Is there any discussion on the motion? And the motion um, is, a, is Mr. Um, uh, Johannesson said is to adopt staff finding for to deny both variance requests. Okay, will the clerk please call the roll? Board member Finlayson. Aye. Board member Hutchins. Aye. Board member Johannesson. Aye. Board member Sandberg. Aye. Vice Chair Softly. Aye. First Mikarova. 
Aye. Member Wang. Aye. Seven yeas and zero nays. That motion passes and to the Petersons, um, you can see staff about what your options are going forward. Um, there's already been one board comment um, recommendation, but um, I strongly suggest you talk to staff, to Ms. Brandt about what your options are um, going forward. And so with that, um, I, I would like to bring up some new business. Um, we have our meeting on in January. We haven't uh, done an approved calendar, but we should probably be able to do that by the second meeting in January. We do have a meeting on the 6th of January and the 20th of January. And according to our bylaws, our annual meeting is at the second meeting in January, which is the 20th. Does anybody else have any? And that, that's what I've got for new business. Um, are, are there any other new business or old business? Question, Chair Perry, what does annual meeting entail? Uh, it's basically uh, electing officers. So people, um, uh, we nominate people in the first meeting of January and then elect them in the second meeting in January at the annual meeting. Got it. Thank you for the clarification. Sure. Yes, Mr. Ellis. Uh, Chair Perry, members of the board, I do I do just want to comment. Yeah, this is our last meeting of the year. Um, the first meeting of next year, uh, I believe we've talked about it, but I just want to reiterate January 6th will be in this same format. Uh, it has yet to be determined what will what the next format will be. If the council doesn't take any action, it will have to be in person. Um, there's noticing requirements. I mean, our noticing requirements will change. There's a lot that will go on by that, uh, about that. So we'll try to keep the board apprised um, off cycle since um, you know it would have since the notices are would have to go out early enough that we would have an idea um hopefully then you know before january 6th but that would help the board under you know the earlier we can give you notice as to whether you would have to be downtown and council chambers on january 20th or whether you'd be able to do it in your in your current method i'm sure you would like to know as soon as possible so as soon as we can find out that information or, or have a definite answer for you uh, we will relay that so great thank you i think that will be very appreciated by everyone Anything else? I have a question. This is Johannesson. Uh, is yeah. there any updates on the members that had to apply for uh, repositions or, or uh, new positions? Uh, Chair Perry, Board Member Johannesson, um, we did have the the three reapply, uh, the three who are up reapply. Um, you are actually um, your names are currently at the committee of the whole meeting right now. Um, as reappointments, we're not having a larger discussion or anything like that. So you're at the committee of the whole for the City Planning Commission. Then it will go to the first meeting of the City Planning Commission, as I understand it, on January 3rd. Um, and then you would go to whatever committee is the appropriate committee as decided by council at the time. Uh, you know, it's traditionally been zoning and planning committee. It's been the business inspections, housing and zoning committee recently. Um, I'm not sure how the council will structure their committees going forward. I have a feeling they'll maintain some form of the current structure for a little bit. Um, there's been a lot of council turnover and I'm not sure how they'll be handling that, but of course that will be completely decided upon by council um, as to their committee structure. Um, so sometime in January, late January, I imagine um, late January, early February, we should be completed through that cycle. Uh, but you uh, the, the the three um, board members have uh, already been submitted to um, the, the City Planning Commission. Great, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay, I think uh, we have completed all items on the agenda for this meeting and without objection, I will declare this meeting adjourned. Our next meeting will be January 6, 2022. Thank you everyone and have a good uh, set of uh, holidays.